All right, that'll take us on to Deathstroke number 20, Christopher Priest writing and Carlo Pugilain on art. Now, I have not caught up yet. I, I still intend to, but I still have like four left before the crossover to get to, but you guys read this, so by all means, what, what was Deathstroke 20 about and was it any good? Yeah, so it this is actually a, a, man. It's, a, it's an epilogue. Like, it's actually yeah. billed as an epilogue to the Lazarus contract. Mm. Oh, cool. Right. So yeah. it's it's almost part of that before the next arc starts. Yeah, because the next one next month, because the single shipping now, the next one is when we get that cover with all the the white hero suits and yes, yeah, yeah. And, and I'm happy that it's single shipping. So because that just lightens up my load of of and reading. Yeah. Week I'm one, a little bit sad because good... I'm Week enjoying four. it, but yeah, <sighs> this issue is a a lot about Slade's relationship with his sons again. Because that's kind of been well, a big theme of Priest's run. His family. Because you also get a little bit of Dr. Icon. Yeah. Uh, and a little bit of Wintergreen and Power Girl, who looks like she's going to be getting a new name because Slade calls her out on that and is like, you're borrowing powers. You're borrowing a name. You need to stand on your own. And also, the most important part of the issue, you know, we, we talk about how slade's a reformed man and that's kind of him trying to yep. convince everyone here he brings her a new dog which that's just it's a little puppy <sighs> it still doesn't what it doesn't did. make up for it no no and but you know still it's, it's it just a start. It, it tells me he really hasn't learned like he's he's putting steps forward and that's the whole point of this upcoming story arc but he hasn't learned it, what it actually means. He's well, yeah, going through that, emotions. The point he, fe- I think he does genuinely feel, you know, regret, and he mm-hmm. wants to change. But I don't think he knows how. I don't think he knows what he's supposed to do. So this yeah. is just a gesture of, oh, this this will be a, this is what I should do. But yeah. and and he means it like he's genuine in in what he's doing, but mm-hmm. he doesn't really understand it either. Yeah, that, that's that could be it, but. Yeah, I, I do like where it's going. I just feel like it's kind of more interesting than what we got in the Lazarus contract. I, I wish now that it wasn't such a big crossover. They didn't make a big deal of it because we, we're we still missing pieces here. We see Rose, and it looks like Joey smashed her head in pretty good. Yeah. She, she has, you know, she came out of surgery. She's married to that one dude just to piss off Slade. And she he's there. They're coming home, and... She takes off her hair and it turns out it's a wig. Um, yeah, and it's got these, these awful scars on her head now. Yep. Yeah. Um, so I still want to know what happened at that wedding. And I know they're leaving it out, but I feel like it would inform us a little bit more. I agree. I think, I like, like I said, when we talked about uh, Lazarus' contract at the end of it, like, I like what it's set up going forward. And I like this new status quo. I like what this is doing. Mm-hmm. But... I kind of wish we'd had that bit in the middle just be better. And, and yeah. like, for just, uh, I, I, like, I think we mentioned how Priest just doesn't, it hasn't played well with him stepping into everyone else's stories. No. I think that's it. Like, when it's here, when it's in his story, yep. it's great. And I feel like if we just had the same effect, but in just his story, like the original plan, yeah. it would have been so much better. Definitely. And I just want to real quick touch on the art with, with Joey. Aguilar, yeah. Yeah, is that he draws the sign language because when you first see that Joey's in a attic meeting, it looks like he's talking to the nun that's hosting it, and yeah. you think, oh man, he jumped into it and now he's using her to speak, but but no, because it's not done in that font that usually is. Yeah, yeah, yeah he's the, the, the into green someone. and black. Yeah, the green and black yeah. speech bubbles. Yeah, she's speaking for him, and you clearly see he's doing sign language. Yeah, yeah, she's and just I, translating. It's a nice touch, isn't it? It is a nice touch, and it it turned what we expect from Joey on on the head. And I almost Slay's a character that doesn't really need an arc. Is I feel like we're getting the arc out of Rose and Joey, and if that's what we get out of here, and like he by him changing or not changing, we get change from the two remaining kids. Mm. I think it's it's done a really good job. I thought um, that scene uh, in the the addicts meeting was really interesting because it was like he he was worried to use his powers even just to communicate yeah. like he's he's resorting to basics like no i'm not doing that i could exactly possess this woman and i i feel like maybe if if this was a meeting that, that it would have been okay like he would have had yep. permission to do that almost just to speak mm-hmm. easier 
right. but he he made the choice to limit himself and well, he's really struggling with that he's reaching out for help he's realizing he can't do it by himself yeah so and and that is good and we get some of him with his dad on the plane and kind of they're forming that team and he doesn't want to be a part of it but he's gonna do it just to make sure basically to keep him honest because this you know him not being honest is what's turned Dr. Icon into this creature that it looks like is going to be the new antagonist. Seems to be, yeah. So, and then uh, the final page, we get the the team pretty much together. We don't have Wally yet yeah. that we, nope. we saw. And is that is that Adeline Kane in the back behind Rose? Uh, I think it is, yeah. Okay. Which that's interesting because after uh, I... reading the Judas contract, hmm. you know, yeah. having her on the team with, with, uh, Joey and Rose and and all that. Yeah. Wintergreen. Uh, I like the the name of the team, the Dark mm-hmm. Titans. Yeah, that's kind of cool. I know that. That's... Yeah, yeah. That's it, it. Kind of pops up. That's uh, the 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 final box that says our oh, next is you know the Dark yep. Titans and I, I kind of like the idea that Slade calls them that. I like this kind of twisted respect almost. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's cool. Well, he also, so... had a, he also had a Dark Titans team. Back yeah. when John's writing Teen Titans, that's featured so, Ravagers, though. We have three Titan teams now, <laughs> so that's nice. Yeah. Um, Titans, Dark Titans, Teen Titans. 